We're going to move on now uh, to the subject of the Nephilim. Um, we're going to allow the two researchers, Sarah and Gaylene, to speak about this. But before they do, I'd just like to introduce a little bit of what I believe Genesis chapter 6 is teaching. Because the analogy is, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the time of the coming of the Son of Man. So the Nephilim occupy a really exaggerated place in their idea of the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. And so we have to be careful about rooting any kind of contemporary understanding of what is going on in this particular passage of Scripture because, as any scholar will tell us, this is probably one of the most controversial passages of Scriptures to interpret in the Bible. And I've read a lot of different interpretations, some by believers and some by unbelievers, and it takes you to some really weird places. So I'd just like to give my brief take on this. And the first thing that I would say is the Nephilim were not the product of the mating that went on between the sons of God and the daughters of men. Now we know the daughters of men were human, because that's what the text says. When men began to multiply on the face of the land, in verse 1, and daughters were born to them. So we're talking about humankind. Then it is this expression, the sons of God. Now, out of the book of Job, we can understand that perhaps these were angelic beings. Uh, the argument is often made that how can angels cohabitate with the daughters of men? I mean, Jesus said they neither marry or are given in, or given in marriage. And I, I kind of look at it, well, you know, it's a simulation of, of a virgin birth of sorts. Uh, the idea being that the Lord Jesus Christ was born of the Spirit in the womb of Mary. So Satan is ever the one who mimics. He's a copycat. But to return to the Nephilim, we know one fact here that restricts the idea or understanding that these beings, these giants, were the offspring of the mating between the sons of God and the daughters of men. And that is found in verse 4, where it says, The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. They were already there. They were on the earth in those days and also afterwards. They were there before and they were there afterwards. And we know also that the progeny that came out of the daughters of men in verse 4, the text says, who were of old men of renown mighty men. The contrast is between the Nephilim, who were there before this uh, mating took place, and also after, with the Gibberim. These were the individuals that were born out of the activity of the sons of God with the daughters of Ben. Mighty men of renown. I would liken them to be dictators, uh, men who were powerful in that time of the world, uh, and, and it's the world's existence at that point before the flood. So uh, you can't take Nephilim and make these giants the product of, because you want some sort of altered DNA. You can't make them the product of this, this mating between the sons of God and daughters of men. What came out of that union was Gibberim, not Nephilim. And so now I'll pass the ball on to either Sarah or Galen and let them explain some more about this and how this kind of stuff is coming in to affect how Christians view their faith. Well, I read Chuck Missler's book, Alien Encounters, because Alien Encounters was said to be the original source material for all of this new postmodern prophecy paradigm. All of the teachers referred to that as a life-changing book once they read it it became the most important book to them. And Chuck Missler actually makes the contention that these uh, sons of God that mated with the daughters of uh, men were uh, space aliens. Mm. And uh, he was the first one to propose that thesis in his book, Alien Encounters. And therefore, he recasts the entire Noah story as a quote, gene pool problem. Mm. And with this gene pool problem, he then said that the reason God destroyed the earth was not 
because of Genesis 6-3 that God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That was no longer the reason for Noah's flood. Chuck Missler said the reason for the flood was because of this corrupted DNA. Now we had half human, half breeds. And so God destroyed the earth and Noah, he takes the word Noah was perfect in his generation and twists that Hebrew word to mean that Noah had the only correct DNA of his generation. And so all of a sudden, after the flood then, you suddenly have giants again. Yeah. Yes, which we understand from just a, an elementary knowledge of DNA that that DNA could have been through Noah's line for people to be of high stature or a larger stature. Sure. I mean, that's just common medical science. But they say that the giants, such as Goliath and Og and, and fellows like that in the Old Testament then, were a product of the same sort of thing, that space aliens must have come to Earth again after the flood and corrupted mankind's DNA. Of course, then the problem that we have is they talk about these mutant offspring. And it's my contention that these offspring that they are talking about are babies. They're children. And, and to, to say, to create this science fiction scenario that we suddenly have offspring on Earth that are subhuman, who are not fully capable of being human, is, is the most racist theology I have ever heard. In fact, Chuck Missler and others teach that they cannot be redeemed. There's no redemption for these yes. mutant hybrids. And many of them also talk about destroying them. Some of them, and maybe you can mention about the assessment tests that they've even discussed, about finding out who, who might have the corrupted DNA. Right. Actually, Chuck Missler favorably quotes from um, a man named Richard Boykin who... Um, has been kicked out of the psychological profession for unethical conduct. And, but Missler quotes him as a credible source. And this, this uh, fellow actually devised an assessment test that would uh, determine whether there was a star child, meaning yeah. someone who was a product of, of this space alien contamination. Well, one of the promoters of um, this doctrine, uh, L.A. Marzulli, actually teaches uh, about black-eyed children, and there's pictures on his blog of, of these inferior race children who uh, need to be identified and apparently destroyed. 